When you're working on your images in Photoshop, you're going to want to be able to zoom in and zoom out. Zoom in and look at the details, whether you're painting them or selecting them or inspecting them, and then zoom out to see the entire composition. And because this feature is so important, there's lots of ways to do that. There's tools and there's menus and context menus or right-click menus and keyboard shortcuts. In addition to zooming, you can also take advantage of things like rulers and grids and guides and other types of features. So let's explore what we can do here in Photoshop. Well, one of the most intuitive tools to use is the actual zoom tool. It looks like a magnifying glass, and if I hover my mouse over it, I can see that the letter Z would turn on the zoom tool, or you could simply click on it to access it. And I get this magnifying glass, and what I can do is just click and drag straight down, and I'm going to zoom in, or click and drag up, and I can zoom smaller. Actually, I should say I can magnify it by dragging down and then um, zoom out. I'm going to scroll over here a little bit to change that. What we have is called the scrubby zoom. That's fun to say, it's scrubby zoom. And it's actually a feature that's turned on with the options bar, part of the zoom. You can see here the scrubby zoom. You can turn on and off. Now that tool is actually made available because of a preference. Let's go here to preferences performance. And there's a thing called the graphics processor. Now if I move my mouse away, you'll see there's no description. But if I move the mouse hover over use graphic processor, it gives me the description and one of the items that it mentions is that the scrubby zoom is enabled because we're using the graphics processor. And the, a good graphics processor is going to help you in a lot of different Photoshop features. So if I don't use the scrubby zoom, then the, the legacy way of doing this is I'm just going to click and drag around, I'm going to make a marquee and whatever I drag around becomes the focal point. Now you can always go the opposite direction using the Alt key. Notice the plus turns into a minus when I hold down Alt and I can click and drag. But that scrubby zoom I think makes it more intuitive. You can just drag one direction or the other direction to zoom big or small. And you can even see the way that plus or minus is showing up there. Now if I zoom larger, magnify in to that screen, I can use the hand tool and here's that hand, or you could press the letter H. And the hand tool looks like a hand. It allows me to scroll through the document. Now we do have scrollers down here, um, on the side rather, and on the bottom. And you can use that. But what I like about the hand tool is that I can be more intuitive when I'm scrolling and to focus on different elements that I want to see. So there that is. And another nice thing that's built into these tools is that you can double click. So if I double click on the hand tool, it's going to take me to a view that fits the whole picture and the image in the screen. Depends on your resolution size and what panels you have opened. And then if I double click on the magnifying tool, it's going to take me to 100%. I can actually see down here in the status bar, it says 100%. And you could even type in a percentage if you wanted to. So that's a nice trick that you can use. Now let's take a closer look at these magnification options in our view menu. In the view menu, we had a feature called fit on screen. That was what we got when we double clicked on the hand tool. And you can also see there's a keyboard shortcut here, fit on screen, control zero. And that's a great keyboard shortcut. If you're going to only learn a few of them in Photoshop, this is really going to be helpful for you to know. A lot of times I'm zooming large and I, then I can quickly control zero, zoom small. And then we had the actual pixels. That's what we got when we were double clicking on the magnifying glass the zoom tool, we got actual pixels. So that's 100%. And it could vary a little bit because our monitors aren't always exactly 100%. But this is basically related to if you were going to put this on a, a website, a screen image, like a PowerPoint presentation, or you're going to email it to a friend, this is the size that it would be. This is obviously a little too big, but a lot of uh, pictures that we take with digital cameras are really actually pretty large for a screen view. Now print size, a little different, let's click on print size. This takes into account the file's resolution and this is the size it would look like if we were going to put this on, into a printed document, for example, an InDesign file or a Word document, this is the default size. So it's giving it not necessarily in pixels, but it's actually giving it to us in inches. And those are some good distinctions to be aware of. I can also use a zoom in and zoom out, that's a little bit like using the, the zoom tool. But notice that there's a keyboard shortcut for these as well, Control plus and Control minus. Um, ignore the little part in the middle, that's just saying do these together. But the Control and the plus key and Control minus is going to zoom in and zoom out. So let's try the Control plus sign, 
you can see, and then control minus. Now it doesn't, you don't choose where it's zooming in. Photoshop just chooses it for you, but it's a nice way to quickly change. And you can also notice down the, on the status bar here as I'm zooming larger or smaller how it's quickly changing by these even increments. Now there's some Keep some right-click options that come available when you're using the zoom command. So if I have my zoom here, I can right-click and I've got some options that we saw from the view. And let's go to the hand tool, right-click, and you can see some other options as well. Now I want to show you a variation of these shortcuts because a lot of times when I'm working in Photoshop, for example, I might have a selection that I've started here and I've created a selection and I want to make some alternate or some changes to that selection and I want to zoom into it. Well, if I switch tools, that's fine, but then I have to go back and switch to my selection tool. So one of the things I like to do is to use a shortcut that allows me to keep my active tool while I can still zoom. So I'm going to hold down the control and the space bar. That's control and space bar. And notice how it looks like a zoom tool, except I still have my current tool active and I can click to zoom in or click and drag because I still have that scrubby zoom available. And then I'm ready to go, I've zoomed in and I still have the tool active and so I can make some changes to it as I need to. Um, another thing that I could do is hold down just the space bar. So there's just the space bar by itself and notice how you get the hand tool, although you still have as your active tool the um, the, the, in this case, the quick selection, but whatever I might have had, and I haven't actually changed. So I'm going to use my hand tool with just by pulling on the space bar, and then I can pan through the document. And if I let go of the space bar, I'm going back to whatever my active tool was. So it gives you some flexibility. Again, here's that control space. In fact, here's control space plus the alt. Notice how it goes to a negative sign, but again, I still have that scrubby zoom, so I don't need it quite as much as I used to with the scrubby zoom. And then here's that space bar, moving it around. So that's a really handy way of zooming. There's one other tool that you might like if you're a visual person and you like some um, of the panels. There's actually a panel called Navigator, and the Navigator panel is intended to help you zoom in. And you notice at the bottom, there's these triangles, I think of them as mountains, and if I scroll way to the bottom, I can zoom all the way out. I don't know if you can really see that, but imagine you had a really large file with high resolution. And if I scroll up to the top, I'm getting so high, I can actually see the pixel grid. Let's just go down a little bit more. Now, as I'm scrolling, there's actually a window here, this red, and that's the pan that allows you to pan through your image. And that's a nice way, you can notice that there's a hand tool. Now this is independent of the hand and the keyboard shortcuts. It's all maintained by the navigator panel. So it gives you another way to um, handle your information. And the navigator panel is something you can turn on and off just easily. And we got there through the window menu with all your panels are stored there. Now another neat thing about your display, your zoom or your view if you want to call it that, these panels can be turned on and off, and so I'm going to press the tab key. When I press tab, notice that the panels are going to disappear. Now press tab again, it toggles them back on. That's a good one to know because I've seen that happen on accident to a lot of people and they realize, I broke it. No, just press tab again and it comes back. And then also there's some different screen modes. And the screen modes are located at the very bottom. I'm going to click and hold, and you can see we're in standard screen mode. There's also one here called full screen mode with menu bar and, and full screen mode. And I notice that there's a letter F, and that's going to let you switch between them. So if I were to, instead of clicking on these buttons, if I were just to press the letter F, it's going to switch. And this gives you a way to demo your image without being distracted by those other elements. And it also can be affected by the tab key. So there's my tab, and I'm going to press the letter F a few times, and you can see how it's making its way through. Press tab again to bring everything back. And most of the time, you're going to want to be in that standard screen mode. It's going to give you all your commands and all your tools for editing purposes. Incidentally, that button down there has been around for quite a while, but if you've used some of the recent versions like CS5 and CS4, you might have been used to at the top an application bar where you're accessing the screen mode. 
and they removed the application bar in this version and they've consolidated it so they return the screen mode down to the bottom of your tools. So it's an easy place to find it. Well, let's go ahead and fit to window. I'll do a control zero to fit to window. Now let's take another look here at your view options. In addition to your view options, oh look, there's your screen mode one more time. In addition to your view options, you can also do things like show your grid and your smart guide. There's also rulers, and this can be helpful as well. So let's start by tickling on the rulers. You can see control R, and there's some ruler options for you. And then we'll go back to view, and we'll go to show, let's do the grid. And you can see the grid, helpful when you're lining things up. And when you also have the view option, notice there's some snap to options. And so as you're making selections or drawing items or placing layers, by default it's going to snap to these grids and these guides and these layers. It's also helpful to know um, that sometimes things will turn on. Right now we have some elements, but you might have some things like a uh, perspective grid or other tools that turn on and it's handy to be able to turn those features off as needed. Sometimes slices turned on and you can turn them off through this view show and hide. Now there's also some preferences that are available with your guides, grids, units and rulers and you can do things such as change the measurements and also change the colors so that it's easier to work with your particular document. Well, these are a lot of tools that you can use for viewing your documents so that you'll be able to work more effectively with those images.